Hey, um, I'm doing a, a little book review here. And uh, by the way, if, if my lights come back on, I hope that doesn't distract you. Uh, I, I've lost power here because it's raining hard. I just have a lantern here. And my lights were kind of going uh, on and off. So, so I just, just decided to turn this lantern on and keep it on as I film this. But um, anyways, I'm doing a book review of... Uh, by the way, this is H. I. Ironside, okay, and I have his book here, where he's talking about eternal security. Okay, this is the title of his book, Eternal Security of the Believer. Okay, and the title sounds really good, and you know, of course, I believe in eternal security of the believer. Amen. Right? Um, the Bible very clearly teaches that once you believe the gospel, okay, uh, you know, and once, you know, once your faith is on Christ, that you have eternal life. And eternal really is something that is everlasting, okay? It's not temporary life. It's not probationary. It's eternal. And, you know, the Bible makes it clear how you can't lose your salvation. You know, I, I made so many videos about that. Um, You know, but this guy, and this really bothered me because I, you know, I was told that this guy was really solid, okay? But this book is filled with so much lordship garbage, backloading heresies, okay, that it's literally the worst book on eternal security I've ever read. Okay. Now, I do try to be pretty careful to, uh, you know, not read heretics, okay? I, and even, you know, even like Calvinists who might write books entitled something like this, right, about eternal security or, you know, what saved, always saved. But, you know, if they're Calvinist, you know, and I know they're Calvinist, I just try to avoid their books, just full stop, okay? Because I know they're going to backload works. But this guy, you know, I, I was told he was solid, and no, th this guy, and let me, just, let me just show you some stuff, okay? And by the way, this isn't all the garbage in his book, like 85% like of his book, of like the pages, it seems like he's trying to, do some, like, cast some doubt about who's really a Christian and, you know, and trying to backload works into the, in, into the gospel and eternal security and trying to, basically, perseverance of the saints garbage that the, that the Calvinists teach, the, you know, the P in the Calvinist tool. Um, now, you know, here... He's talking about how he's not so enthusiastic about the term perseverance of the saints. And then, very ironically, he proceeds to say, I believe in it. And he says that, he says, you know, I'm going to use my Lordship or Lou verse, by the way, because this book sounds like it was written by Lordship or Lou. Okay. So here we go, here we go. The perseverance of the saints. I believe in it. I believe that all saints all really belong to God. Well, parse or bear and to the end, for the book tells me, hey, that shall endure until the end that the same shall be saved, okay? Matthew 24, 13. And look, A bunch of modern day Calvinists, Lord Shippers, just weirdos on the internet. This is one of their go to verses to try to uh, basically preach some sort of work salvation. Okay. And by the way, you know, if you read Matthew 24, 
And then you get to verse 13. If you just look at the context, you know, it, it's talking about a physical salvation, okay? Not a spiritual salvation. It's talking about a physical salvation during the tribulation, um, you know, because during the, the great tribulation, there's good, you know, there's going to be an incredible amount of violence and death. Okay. But he wants to take this verse out of context to try to teach perseverance of the saints. Just like, you know, the uh, the Lord shippers nowadays do. Okay. But this guy died in, I think it was like 1951. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, it's kind of funny. He talks about how God whipped him into subjection. Yeah, that sounds like a Lord shipper. Um, and I say this to people a lot just because your daddy beat you okay the, doesn't mean God's gonna give you a whooping like you know God, the way God chastises people is, is not through abating okay but uh, you know <laughs> we'll talk about that in another video someday but you know another part of his book you know the first part of this guy's book you know it's small chapters, like one or two pages, about, you know, something, some point he's trying to make about eternal security, and just him, his kind of commentary on it, you know, like for, you know, a page or two of a chapter. And then the second part of the book, second half kind of part of the book, right, is, uh, is him, like, attempting to answer problem verses where you know people try to take these verses out of context to try to teach something like you could say that you could lose your salvation or something like that okay. or to try to you know pre you know preach some sort of work salvation now in question two you know he's answering some question about matthew 24 13 which he just mentioned earlier in his book okay and check out what he says here Okay. The writer of this question recognizes that the primary, of this that that primary, that primarily, okay, working hard with my pronunciation, okay. Or I'm not really a question. Okay. The writer of this question recognizes that primarily. This refers to the great tribulation, but it is a principle that I believe every preacher of the word should insist on. Okay, so you hear what he's saying here? He's saying, hey, you know, the application of Matthew uh, 24, you know, he doesn't even talk about it, how, you know, how to talk about a physical salvation, not a spiritual one, but, uh, he does point out that it, it, it's referring to a thing, a time in the future, which we know is the Great Tribulation. Okay, that part's true. But he just insists that every preacher of the Word of God, you know, hey, if you're a preacher, if you're God's man, you better preach this to people. You better insist that if you don't do it to the end, you're not a real sign. Bunch of garbage. That's just pure backloading of works. Okay. Totally negating grace. And then, you know, later on in the paragraph, it has the endurance that proves the reality of a work of grace within the soul. And then he gets even more hardcore to, to end answering this question too about what about Matthew 23 or 24, 13. There is now that would no, God, that would no use. Okay. There is no use. You're carrying on a profession if your life does not prove it to be real. Man can misuse any doctrine. Okay. So 
what do people kind of nowadays say? Like, what's the version of this nowadays? Oh, you know, you better make Jesus Lord of your life, or if he's not Lord at all, he's not Lord at all. So, you know, and, and this whole, you know, change life gospel, which is another gospel, by the way. It's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. And look, the gospel of your salvation is how Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again on, on the third day according to the scriptures, okay? And look, it's Jesus Christ that justifies you. It's not your, your, your chain's life. flip of one hand here and and look a, a lot of lordshippers now they say they say they're like uh you know yeah it's faith alone but faith is never alone because even the devil's believe and travel that works yeah so get to work you know and you're totally taking things out of context but they love to insist on that you know faith has to accompany works and you're not really saved like they love to you know, insist on that garbage you know again negating the grace of god negating the gift you know and negating so many biblical concepts um you know and he, he seems to come to the you know the, this section here it's called it's called it's called justified by faith but look look at what he basically defines as being justified by faith because he backloads it. He seems to come up against people who say that, uh, you know, is by faith and works, right? Or, or like works. He's like, no, that's not true. He's like, it is by faith alone and good works sprang from that. When you know you have eternal life, you will find your heart so fail the love for Christ, that you will try to live for his glory, okay? And he's, so he, like, you know, like almost 90% of this, uh, of the pages in this book, he's, he's trying to like just either really overtly or more discreetly backload works, okay? And look, like, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't read your book and while I'm reading it start wondering if you're a lordshipper. Okay. If you're supposedly solid on doctrine and you believe in grace. I'm trying to find some other things I highlight. And look, I, no, I didn't highlight everything because I was getting so bad of how stupid some of this guy's teachings are. Um, let me flip around. Oh, here's one. Yeah. A man who says, I am a Christian and does not follow holiness as either self deceived or hypocrite. I'm untying this with all my heart. And in the context of all the other things he wrote, you know, he just, he's like, as you keep reading, he just sounds more lordshipy and more lordshipy. And saying something like this, it's like, you can't even give him the benefit of the doubt because all the other garbage he wrote in his book. So he's basically saying, you know, that basically... Well, I don't even think you're saved if you're not living a holy life, falling out your money. So basically, just more hardcore uh, P of uh, in the Calvinist tool. You know, and he, he, you know, his question of Hebrews six was super weird too. He had a weird thing in, in I think it was Second Peter. You know, 
weirdos quoting Spurgeon, you know, that, that usually <coughs> gets you into heresy if you start quoting Spurgeon. Because Spurgeon was a heretic, so if you're quoting him, you know, usually it makes you say some weird stuff. You know, it's quoting Spurgeon about Spurgeon talking about, you know, that, you know, if some dog uh, was ever born again, and, you know, and got the, the sheep nature, which I guess in, the, in this metaphor would be like the new nature, right? And the new man. Uh, and he said, it would never have gone back to its own vomit. And he, he reiterates this without quoting Spurgeon, like uh, in his book as well. Let me see if I can find you that. But he's basically saying, hey, if you, you know, because what was he trying to teach here, right? And what was Spurgeon trying to teach? Was that, hey, um, if you get saved, you better have a changed life and you can't go back to nothing about your old life. And that just proves you're not really real sad. You know what? I said, oh, if you were a lamb and you had the light of the lamb and you were really regenerated, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go back and make a dog. Okay, they totally forget about the old man. My vid, if my camera runs out of memory, sorry. Okay, I have a habit of not clearing my phone as much as I should. We're going to make videos. Hopefully I have enough memory. And look, um, you know, He did not use the word Calvinism in this book, okay? But let me tell you something. You know, even if you're not claiming to be a Calvinist in your book, but you're preaching perseverance of the saints, like, the basic result is the same, where you're trying to cast doubt on people's salvation, and you're trying to get people to examine uh, themselves and their own works instead of uh, remembering what Jesus Christ did for them on the cross. And if you're trying to constantly examine yourself as proof of whether or not you're a Christian, instead of like, you know, the fact that you believe the gospel, then you're always going to have doubts. Okay? And that's what Calvinism loves to do. It loves to cast doubt on you. Okay? You don't have assurance with Calvinism. And, they, may, you know, they may say they do, but if you just hold them to their doctrine... And, and they talk long enough, you know, they're going to default back to basically that works prove that you're saved, and if you don't have works, you're not really saved. Maybe I didn't highlight the, the other one where he's talking about, you know, where he, is it, hold on. So I read it yesterday. I know it's in here. If I just did an highlight it. There was there was one where he's talking about also uh, something like if you can't control your behavior, then you're not really a Christian. Oh, here. Oh, no. This is even worse. Um, oh, and I found the other one about the sheep. Okay, let's go to the sheep thing first, and then we'll go over here, and, we'll, and then we'll finish the video. Okay. He's, you know, he's basically saying, oh, are you really following Jesus? You know? That, you know, if you, you're not really one of his, if you're just not following, and, and you know, when people preach like this, you know, the hearer of, of preaching like this, they're always going to think like, well, what does he mean by like, how much do I have to follow? 
Is it a hundred percent? And you know, and these preachers, they always insinuate that basically it's at like a hundred percent, or you're not really alive, right? And then he's, you know, this, you know, if you, uh, basically, when you're born again, you have you receive the new birth, and you have this new life, and you love to follow Jesus, and it says, and if you do not, you're not a Christian. Okay, so again, he he negates the old man. To try, to tries to make you doubt your salvation, and basically, like, well, you know, and look to, to them, you'll never love Jesus enough, okay, to for them to think that you're saved. You know what I mean? You'll you, you'll never have enough works for them to think that you're saved, and they're not looking for your testimony of Jesus Christ about how you believe the gospel. They want to know how you're behind them, yeah. And look, in this section called Dangerous Doctrine, where he's he, he's trying to defend people who, you know, people who basically say that if you just believe in eternal security, that just gives you license to sin. He doesn't use that term, license to sin. He didn't say those people use that term. But that's basically what, you know, what the attack is, okay? It's just slightly different words because it's in a different time period, right? They didn't probably... Have, that t- term maybe wasn't coined in his time about license to say, it. like that accusation, right? Um, but it's this very similar accusation about, oh, you just believe, if you just believe in a dollar security, it doesn't make any difference what you do in your life, you can just do whatever. Okay. And then, you know, and, and he, this is like basically his defense against that. He's like, if you know, if you do not believe yourself, shows that you are not a real Christian. And look, you know, I have, a, I have a few other books from this guy, and, you know, from what I've read of those other books, and one I read entirely, one about the Trinity, where he, even in that one, he, he like, put some legalistic kind of lore chippy garbage in that book. And, you know, I've read some of his notes on Haggai, which was weird. Um, you know his whole thing his thing about enduring to the end too where he, he's basically talking like you know uh, the, that if you if you, you know if you just forsake the Lord I should prove you're not even real sign and not real real bond and I not real like rest and blah 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 but you know in the Bible um, you know all his disciples forsook him you know, the Bible even predicted that, prophesied about that. And, you know, also there's a bunch of people that narrate. And by the way, the narrator of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. Okay, That's, he's God. So um, God, who is the narrator, you know, tells you that, you know, certain people believe, but they were afraid of the Jews. So basically they, they were quiet about it. But, uh, you know, according to weird Calvinist garbage, you know, supposedly, you know, the apostles weren't really saved and those people that believe weren't really saved. Nobody got really saved except about 120 in a book of rats. Look at them. There they were. Everybody else. No, I mean, this is garbage. Okay. Um, there's a lot of people we never really heard about again after they believed, but the Bible said they believed. Okay, and I'm sick and tired of you know people like basically worshiping uh, like themselves or some heretic preacher and their own works and just you know. The, the worshiping the doctrines of men and just blaspheming God and trying to negate the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, you know, basically spitting in the face of God and calling him a liar. And saying, how oh can, you know, he didn't give those people eternal life because I don't say the works. A bunch of... 
Look, I'm not going to do it today because it's raining, okay? But uh, this week I'm burning this book. It's horrible. It has a good title, okay? But this guy was a retard. You know, to write this book and not understand how he's just negating the grace of God, just almost on every page. It's ridiculous.